Now that we have assembled our model in SCAD, we can print it on a 3D printer. In this video, we're going to keep things very simple and just print a plain cube. In this way, we can look at the instructions sent from OpenSCAD to the following stages in the printing process and show how the printer is controlled. So here is our beautifully finished cube in OpenSCAD. Press F6 for a final render. The console screen confirms that it's completed. To translate what is a solid block into the output used for the next stage, we choose Export as STL. STL stands for Stereolithography, and it's a very popular format used widely in 3D printing. It can be a binary file that we'd just see as ones and zeros, or more commonly a text file that is human readable, like this. Even though this is a very simple file, it's not immediately apparent what has happened here. There are two words that may be new. Vertex, which in geometry is a special point that is a corner or intersection of a shape, the plural being vertices, and facets, which are flat surfaces. Using this language, we could say that our cube has eight vertices and six facets, like a dice. STL does not see our cube in this way. If we plot the vertices shown here, we see that the cube has been broken down into triangles. This may not seem to be sensible at first sight, but it turns out that any shape can be described in triangles. Well, roughly speaking anyway. It's not an easy job, but may be done approximately. We saw in the first SCAD video that we could turn a sphere into a quick and dirty rough approximation with only a few facets, or refine it into a smooth ball that took ages for the pie to calculate, draw and move. So it is with the STL output, and if I put a small bump on one side of the cube, you will see vertex after vertex being created, all points of an array of facets that are all triangles. Even this small bump is made up of many triangles. In STL, no other shape is allowed, only triangles. A shape successfully built of triangles is called waterproof, and OpenSCAD is very good at making waterproof shapes, which is one reason why we chose it. Other drawing packages can fail to make shapes just made of triangles and leave holes that fail to print, which is an error situation, sometimes called a leak. OpenSCAD therefore produces a waterproof approximation of your model made up of only triangles. However good your printer is, it's these triangles that limit the precision of your final print. There are many software packages that can be used for the next stage, but our choice is Repetia. Start the package and select File, Load, and select the STL file just exported from OpenSCAD. Our cube appears again, and we can move it around in 3D. These buttons on the left-hand side control the orbiting, panning, and zooming. Have a play with the interface, as there are little differences in the control from OpenSCAD. The idea of this software is to place your object on the platform ready to be printed. You can, if you wish at this stage, add further copies of the cube and other items to be printed at the same time. But in this demonstration, we want to keep things as simple as possible to see how they operate. There are hundreds of 3D printer designs. Some use an extrusion process where the plastic is heated and oozes out of a hot printer head like a long string of toothpaste. Others seem to suck the shape magically from a liquid bath like this. Some produce components for cars, others print foods, and some replacement body parts for animals and even humans. My printer is a basic homemade design and extrudes plastic taken from a long reel, squeezes it through a hot printer head and builds the cube layer by layer. The plastic goes solid when it cools. The bed is heated to help with plastic flow and this fan controls the air temperature. The bed is flat and only moves in the X and Y coordinate directions driven by belts connected to these stepper motors. Z is the third coordinate of the 3D system and is movement up and down. These two motors at either side control the height. We now need to transform our list of STL triangles into a series of commands that position the print head layer by layer to build the cube. It needs to start close to the bed and work up through the series of layers to produce the full cube. Again, there is a choice of software packages that can perform this task, and we have selected and installed our favourite choice. It's called Slicer. And no, that's not a typing error. The E is replaced with a number 3. With the image of the cube placed centrally, we can move from the Object Placement tab here to the Slicer tab. Slicer's single task is to work out how to build a cube using our choice of printer. 
Obviously, there are lots of parameters that describe the printer. The size of the bed, how the motors are controlled, the type and size of plastic we are using, and even the different colours, if we are using more than one colour plastic. These are all set up in the system's configuration, which we will cover in another video. Slicer runs the conversion by pressing this button. As you see, it does not take long on a speedy machine with a simple shape. Some screens flash by fairly quickly, and you may see a reference to G-code. Once completed, the screen jumps to this preview screen to show our cube again, but this time with a difference. Look closely, and you can see how the cube has a ripply edge. It's now formed by an extrusion. Using these controls, we can show how the cube is going to be printed layer by layer. At the base, there is a single strand of plastic that helps to get the plastic flowing at the beginning and defines the perimeter of the shape to be printed. The cube is then built layer by layer up the z-axis. If we look from above and work backwards into the cube, we find that the edges are really solid. Inside, it is not solid. It's made up of a honeycomb pattern that Slicer has introduced to make the cube lighter and to save plastic. First layer, second layer, third layer, and then the honeycomb pattern all the way to the top until the top three layers of solid facet. Slicer has calculated how to change the STL file into an extrusion. But how does the printer know what to do? Well, it's instructed by a set of commands called G-codes. The G-codes may be seen by clicking on this G-code editor tab. Again, it's a human readable file. Well, a file that you can read if you understand G-code. G-code may sometimes be called NC code, standing for numerical control. Numerical control is a term used when electrical systems are employed to automatically control machines like drills, lathes, millers and routers. It was first used in the 1950s, long before 3D printers were invented. But why reinvent the wheel? It can be expanded to deal with our 3D printer requirements. So, looking at the G-code, we see a title line with the date and time the code was generated. Notice the semicolon at the start of the line. We have said in the past that a semicolon is short for please, used to mark the finish of a command, but here it means comment, just like the double slashes used in OpenSCAD. You can place any useful comments after the semicolon. The printer will ignore it. The date the file was generated is followed by a couple of comment lines containing information about some of the important settings. Again, we will cover these in a later video. Notice how helpful it is to see comments in code, as G21 is explained here for us as set units to millimetres. M107 does not have a comment, so we have the inconvenience of looking it up in the reference, and here it is. M107, turn the fan off. The following lines are commented. Wait for the bed temperature to be reached and set the temperature. The yellow bed that the plastic is printed on is hot to touch. Here you can see that the value of S is set to 65 degrees. G28 sends the printer head to its reset position. G1 is a move command and Z5 sets the height of the printer head to 5 millimeters above the bed, with F5000 setting the feed rate at which the plastic is sent to the head. M109 sets the printer head to 205 degrees, and you can take it from me, that is hot if you touch it with your finger. The main work is carried out here, with the G1 command sending out X and Y position movements for the head to move backwards and forwards across the bed, with E being the length of the extrude and F again adjusting the feed rate. Remember, the X and Y coordinates are given here in millimetres. How accurate is the positioning of the head given the values specified in this G-code example? Notice on this G1 command the extrusion value is negative, which means the printer will draw back a little of the plastic to make a nice clean start. Here the Z value is set to 0.35mm to begin the plot, and so it continues. The final step is then to press this button to connect the printer to transmit the G-code to see your design appear on the 3D printer. In this video, we have explained how the virtual model designed in OpenSCAD was processed through a number of stages to appear physically on a 3D printer. After designing a simple cube, it was exported from OpenSCAD in STL format. STL was a description of the shape we wanted to print made up entirely of triangles. STL described where the facets of the triangles were positioned using vertices. 
Estiel file was used as an import into Repetia, where it was reconstructed and an image placed on the printer bed. Before we could print, the slicer program sliced the cube into horizontal layers, as this is how 3D printers operate. Slicer produced the GCO file that was a list of instructions for the 3D printer. It was clever enough to understand where the outside facets of the cube were and made them solid, but saved plastic by turning the inside of the cube into a honeycomb style. Repetia then fed the codes line by line to the printer to control the temperature of the bed, the temperature of the printer head and its position. The feed rate was the amount of plastic that was forced to the print head to build the cube. You may hear of this process being referred to by two acronyms, CAD, Computer Aided Design, carried out by OpenSCAD, and CAM, Computer Aided Manufacture, the process of printing on the 3D printer. This completes our look at how the virtual shape leaves OpenSCAD and appears in the physical form on the printer bed.